As a result of industrial pollution and sewage wastewater, Dead Horse Lake was designated a Superfund site in 1996. The shark uses lipids from high fat fare like this to help you with her reign of terror.
here in the grotto that the shark can discover the absolute serenity deep within her soul. Until local police departments settle a dispute over jurisdiction, these two remain a popular attraction for selfie-seeking snorkelers. Military hunter stumbles upon another source of nourishment. Shark versus dolphin, orca versus giant squid, boat versus pylon. When establishing dominance, the contest is usually a deadly one, with survival as the prize. The threats to our ocean seem overwhelming. But by working together now, we can ensure that future generations always have a place to dump their old time. People getting eaten on camera always makes me think, I'm glad we have these cameras. Fort Love is local seldom miss an opportunity to indulge in mindless, gratuitous slaughter. Kind of regular there at Flamingo Joe's. People say it's a tourist train. But it's the only place to get a decent Cesarec that don't have me on their do not serve list. The Scourge of the Swampland, Bayou Willie. She's up front! Only time will tell whether government actions can diminish Port Clovis' reputation as a shark attack hotspot. The shark hunter is the only thing keeping tourists from a nasty, horrible death, outside of just avoiding the beach for a few hours.
The appetite of this shark is nearly insatiable. Human's attention spans are short. We've already forgotten about the shark and her many crimes, so thus ends the bounty. Shark bounties became commonplace here after the previous mayor's practice of hiring Fijian shark charmers proved largely ineffective. bracelet alarms fills the air as shark hunters lead their homes to track our bull shark. The bartender life ender, Bobby Bojangles. <laughs> Throwing caution to the wind, the big fish escalates its battle against Fort Clothes. <laughs>
Port Clovis's most disreputable citizens have converged on the area. It seems Port Clovis has forgotten all about its rogue shark, for now. I mean, I'm not an ornithologist, but I think it's probably a bad idea to get in the middle of Flamingo's natural migration cycles. Just saying. While most know him as the friendly face of Captain Winky's fish and chips, in real life the pirate was a genocidal monster who murdered and enslaved thousands. Sometimes even sharks just need to dirty bolt.
Random mutations aren't random. They require large amounts of mutagens as a catalyst. waters around Trash Island, where they enjoy a steady diet of hypodermic needles and used pregnancy tests. Or be eaten world, there's little room for error or sentimentality. catches the scent of blood. 
they will zealously charge towards any potential food in sight. the primitives ends with a decisive victory. The Greeks refer to sharks as this instantized protein makes a great between meal supplement, giving the shark the energy she needs to put on serious pants. I would like to assure the Antolini crime family that this footage will in no way be used in the final edit of our program. Back when the old wooden sailing vessels ruled the sea, sharks were their constant companions. From Adam. If he kill another fisherman, that's between them and him, yeah?
upset by these incidents than the city council, who sees vital tourism dollars evaporating with every attack. Handyman special overlooking breathtaking panoramic lake views. Open living with vintage appeal. Call Deborah. Evaded justice for her heinous crimes, the shark is now the subject of a bounty. Survival rates from shark attacks are actually quite high. Clovis retaliates against the shark by sending some of its most disreputable citizens. aren't part of a bull shark's normal prey doesn't mean they don't deviate from their typical diet. The Savage Shrimper, Pookie Paul. Has escalated, and the price on the shark's head has risen. Shark hunters have close friends or family members who have been eaten or half eaten by sharks. Anybody 
The hunt ends, but this is a mere pause in the eternal struggle between man and nature. Goaded by lusty appetites, the shark's sole aim is to eat and evolve. Say what you want. Them hobos good workers. Unlike my so-called son, Kyle. That's why I pay him to stay on the lookout for that shark. As with many social movements, the annual Driftwood Man Festival purports to foster progressive change, but it's really just an excuse for hippies to flout public nudity laws. of 73 was a magical time in Port Clovis when local favorite Trash Talk placed 20th in the Derby and the city placed first in the country for petty theft. Sure, it would be more practical simply to close the beaches. But why do that when you can just set loose a gang of amphetamine-fueled locals with guns?
Another shark hunt draws to a close. Should be embarrassing, right? But in Port Clovis, they put up a monument. Guess you gotta be the best at something. The successful shark hunt is traditionally celebrated with off-brand cinnamon whiskey and large quantities of pseudo effects. The fishing phenom, Candyman Curtis. are getting heated in this war of attrition between man and nature.
the shark hunters have arrived. Soon we will see them in action and quite possibly discover which one of them stole my car steering. The hunt is over, and there will be an inevitable rush on dollar drafts at Flamingo Joe's. The pelagic beast surveys the scene with cold, unfeeling eyes. From the moment she's born, the shark's cold, expressionless eyes are constantly on the watch for food. Protein caches like this one are a convenient and tasty way for sharks to increase their protein intake. Appetite is never satiated.
not really a gourmand. The bull shark will eat just about anything. made a home near the retired nuclear cooling towers. This is a great opportunity for the shark to test the theory that exposure to gamma rays gives you superpowers. Predator swats prey with its muscular tail. So begins another reckless campaign of extermination. The powers of society have retaliated with deterrent action, but mankind is ultimately impotent to stop Mother Nature's vengeance.
Even for sharks, it's important to create personal time for sober self-reflection. The Needle Tooth Nightmare, the Barracuda. recognize it as the title of a classic rock radio staple, did you know that it's also a fish? Well, it's true. The peace of the grotto enables the shark to approach the world with greater confidence and effectiveness.
back on board the Cajun Queen. That's Kyle, my son. He's just here for the summer. Studies marine biology. <laughs> Look at that. I got one hand can still tie a hook. You got two can barely tie his shoes. <laughs> Must get that from his mama. Yeah. He used to help my daddy around. Spent a lot of time together. But we wasn't close. He was a shark on him. That's all he was. If anybody were gonna catch the mega, it'd be him. <laughs> Thought it was a government experiment, got himself loose. Boy, he wanted that shark. Wanted it bad. Found it once. Didn't catch it, no. What... what happened to your father? Huh? What happened? Look, uh... I ain't got time to answer questions all day. Got work to do. Just like Kyle LeBlanc, our young bull is the inheritor of a long family tradition, struggling to find her place in the world. <laughs>